It's nearly half past six. Stay with us. It's time to join the BBC's news teams where you are. Goodbye. Yes, a very good evening to you. Thank you for joining us. Welcome to BBC Look North. Now, they flew for hours in sub-zero temperatures. The engines of their Lancaster bombers were so loud that they couldn't hear the enemy gunfire. Many of them never, of course, returned. Hundreds of missions were flown out of Lincolnshire's Second World War airfields to drop bombs on Germany. Today, veterans are marking 70 years since one of the most dangerous daylight raids. Only one member of that mission is still alive. Our reporter Simon Spark has been to meet him and is at the event this evening in Woodall Spa near Lincoln. Um, why was this raid so important then, Simon? Peter, the Augsburg raid is one remembered for acts of tremendous bravery and um, it's so often overshadowed by the likes of the Dambusters raid that followed but this was the first major sortie that the Lancasters were used for, and it would be one that would go horrifically wrong. Mr Brendan Bracken, Minister of Information, introduces heroes of the Augsburg raid to the press. On April the 17th, 1942, the RAF's new heavy bomber, the Lancaster, would be put to its first big test. A raid was planned on the MAN U-boat factory in Augsburg, but it was to happen in daylight and consist of a thousand mile round trip. Everyone thought that they were playing a practical joke. It's one of the most audacious ra raids that Bomber Command mounted, certainly, of this period of the war. And yet, in terms of airmanship, courage, determination, skill, it's one of the greatest. 70 years ago to the day, the airfield here at RAF Waddington would be rumbling with the sound of seven Lancaster bombers. They would taxi past the control room, which still stands today. Six of them would take off to meet up with six others that would leave from RAF Woodall Spa. And today's moody skies add to a, a powerful sense of sadness and, and loss by the fact that the six that left here on the 17th of April 1942, only one would make it back. Squadron leader John Nettleton headed 44 Squadron that left RAF Waddington, but four Lancasters were shot down when they flew too close to a German airfield. He survived with his co-pilot, Pat Dorhill. Today he spoke to me at 3 p.m., the time they set off for the raid. Prior to this, because I thought that low level with all the armament that the, um, the Lancaster carried, it would be a fairly easy affair. I wasn't nervous at all, but I, I must say, once, once the first aeroplane was shot down, well then, of course, my feelings changed. The six other Lancasters from 97 Squadron that left from RAF Woodall Spa were more successful, but still another two were lost. In all, 49 of the 85 airmen were posted as missing. They were all young lads. They were all keen. They were, some of them had only done a few operations. And so, uh, let's go, lads. And, and so they went and they didn't come back. Squadron leader Nettleton received the Victoria Cross for his bravery. Patrick Dorhill was awarded the Distinguished Flying Cross, or DFC. And the Augsburg raid today still stands on a par by that carried out by the Dambusters for its audacity and bravery. Well, tonight, uh, about 120 people are gathering here at the Petwood Hotel for a talk of on that raid. And, of course, the Petwood itself used to be home for the officers' mess of the 617 Dambusters Squadron. But, of course, topping the bill tonight will be, of course, the chance to meet Flight Lieutenant Pat Dorhill, the only living survivor of the Augsburg raid. Peter. Simon, thank you very much indeed. Simon Spark there uh, reporting from uh, Woodall Spa. Now, children playing... Well, believe it or not, almost 70 years to the second, you'd have been... Well, what would you have been doing 70 years ago? About three o'clock uh, in the It is, um, yeah. I, I was just told, yeah, three o'clock we took off, roughly. Um, well, sitting beside Nettleton, I suppose, and the... Uh, in our Lancaster, uh, either just having taken off or getting ready to take off, 
course, uh, Waddington in those days was a, a grass airfield. And um, I'm not sure if we, we didn't take off in formation in, in two Vicks of three. I couldn't swear to that, but I have a feeling we did that, it being a grass airfield. How old would you have been? I was 20. Yeah. And what were your feelings? What was what was running through? Because from what I hear in the morning, when this mission was was told to you, it was almost as if are, are they really being serious that we're doing this in in daylight uh, and trying to to go a, a thousand mile round trip? What what was it like then? When you when was it like a joke? Did you feel? <laughs> are you t telling us the truth here? Well, I, I'll tell you, um, I'd done 15 operations before then on Hamden's, my squadron converted to Lancaster's, and, and uh, because of my lack of what they thought real experience, I was crewed with Nettleton, as were several of my Rhodesian colleagues, and uh, we did... Um, a week or two of low-level training beforehand. And I, I confess that before operations on Hamden's, I was always a bit nervous. But prior to this, because I thought that low-level, with all the armament that the, um, the Lancaster carried, it would be a fairly easy affair. I wasn't nervous at all. <laughs> of course, they all set off. I mean, that must have been a, a thunderous thing in itself with six, well, yeah, six or seven Lancasters all ready to take off at the same time. Six Lancasters from Waddington eventually flew and then meeting. What was that like? What, what sort of, uh, you know, what, what was the like, what was it like between all the troops and all the, all the airmen? What do you mean, how everybody felt about it? Yeah, getting on and, and off they went, you know, from Waddington. Well, um, having trained, you know, for a week or two beforehand, I think everybody was thoroughly ready for it. Um, I don't know what everybody else's feelings were when we went into the briefing room and saw where we were going to go. But I say for my part, I thought, hmm, you know, this shouldn't be too bad. Uh, the operation was so well planned with uh, fighter uh, deviation uh, to the north of the, uh, the route we were going to take. It seemed to me that we would have a, an easy flight through to the target and the only danger would be over the target. And uh, being at low level, I thought even that would make it fairly difficult for us to be shot down. But I, I was wrong there too. <laughs> Indeed, because obviously the group led by Nettleton veered. North. What, what happened there? Did it? Did it? Was it um, because of the navigational tools, or why did they go off course? I don't. I don't know. I just couldn't tell you why we uh, took a slightly different route from the one we should have done. I think it would have been accident accidental. Uh, anyway, it uh, it just was our misfortune that we uh, that we um, you know flew right past the uh, the German fighter field to which. Uh, the fighters, their fighters were returning from the um, engagements in the north. So when you realise that has happened and they took off again, obviously, to, to, to shoot... Well, some of them seemed to come straight after us without they were heading in to land and sort of veered off and uh, came straight after us. That's the impression I had. What ran through your mind then? It, it must have been 
probably one of the biggest horrors you could ever experience. <laughs> well, well, it it wasn't um, because I thought six uh, Lancasters with all the armament we had, we would be a match for any fighter. <laughs> that shows my lack of experience. But I, I must say, once once the first aeroplane was shot down, well then of course my feelings changed. And uh, I think the first first one down was Oh, I forget. Uh, I know the the middle one was led by. Um, I hope my names have <laughs> gone okay, at the moment. Okay. Flight lieutenant. He always wore, wore pajamas. It was lucky. When when the first plane was shot down, your feelings changed. And what happened? What? How did your feelings change? And, and then when another one went down, and then, you know, it, it must have been. Just yeah. Then. Through. Talk then us what, what then it was pretty scary, and uh, however, uh, in fact, the the worst uh, the worst experience is when Dusty Rhodes on our right. There was Garwell on our left, Dusty Rhodes on our right, and Dusty Rhodes was was on fire, and his plane just sort of. With the, you know, you can see the flames in the cockpit, just sort of swooped, and I think we just sort of raised up a bit to uh, try and escape from 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 being hit by him, and of course that was a real disaster. And then uh, that was just left Galwell on our left and ourselves to proceed. Knowing that that had happened even before getting to the target, with just the two, that must again have been just it must drive it home to you with such power. With what, what yes. risk you're taking? <laughs> it, it certainly did then. Yeah. What, what did. ran through your mind? Talk us through. Well, uh, frankly, I, I thought then, with the whole Luftwaffe up after us, we'd we'd never get there. But um, Nettleton was determined to to proceed. I mean, we could have escaped south if we'd wanted to, and to the west. But, but Nettleton was determined to carry on, quite rightly. And uh, we just flew on. But, uh, fort um, well, for uh, after that, we had the misfortune to. Um, pass over a um, storage depot where there were tanks and uh, trucks and things and uh, they were ready for us and the um, tracer bullets came streaming by how they didn't hit us I don't know but after that it was uh, an easy flight on over the rest of France uh, past Lake Constance and on to Augsburg. Nevertheless it must have still left a, a numbing sensation knowing that um, four, four of the other six of your formation. Well uh, yeah as I, I said but before the uh, operation I thought that uh, the approach over the target at a couple of hundred feet would be easy. But um, as you know, um, Garwell was was hit over the target, and as we turned away from the target, after we dropped our bombs, um, we uh, saw him crash on a hillside. Um, I think he he'd made quite a successful landing, but I think three of his crew were. Uh, Killed. And then, of course, turning around and and, and coming back. But uh, wow, a, 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 an incredible, incredible experience of of 
Oh, well, fortunately, it was getting beginning to get dark, and um, we couldn't continue flying low as we had done before. So we had to climb up to about six thousand feet, I think, to um, to clear the Jura. I think they are the mountains there. Anyway, we flew back between. Um, after we crossed them, we then went down to about 4,000 feet again and flew back at that height all the way. And by that time, it was really dark. And of course, as you probably know, we, we got lost. <laughs> and ended up in Blackpool. So. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it is one of the most uh, Im important battles, isn't it, of, of, the, of the Lancaster, this new aircraft before the Dam Busters raid and everything, you mm. know, this was an incredibly important mission. What, what does it mean to you now, 70 years on, still being able to tell your story and, 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 and thinking back of, of this moment in time, 70 years ago? Well, I think the, the theory of the, the operation was, was very good. You know, the idea of slow, low-level flight to attack a target because at low level you'd be sure of hitting the target and basically less chance of being hit by flak and with fighter escort or with diversionary raid as raids has been laid on for us I think the plan was good and um, it was a shame in a way that, well it was a shame that um, it went wrong, that we, we were off track. See the other squadron got all the way to the target without mishap. So really the, the concept was excellent and um, had it not been for that disaster from our point of view. I dare say there would have been more ra raids like it. So there we are. On return home, knowing the losses, what what was that like for the the whole crew to cope with? Well, I I, I must say I, wa I was in sort of shock for quite a time afterwards. Uh, they were they were good enough to give us um, three days leave which I enjoyed. Uh, then came back and we had a had a break. We, um, Nettleton uh, with his crew and me went to Duxford to um, try and work out some sort of system of uh, evasion with there were one to meet up with fighters, some sort of evasive method, but I, I don't think anything really came of that. And uh, then after that, so that would be about a, three weeks after the raid, I went on training to be a, uh, an aircraft captain myself. And so thereafter I Flew lengths in charge. And what about Nettleton, the, the man you sat next to on on this this formidable raid? I mean, what was he like as a as a person? A oh, charming chap. Um, everybody got on well with him, and um, I mean, he did a good job. He, you know, he was keen. As I say, we we could have escaped if we'd wanted to, but. He was um, determined to carry on, quite rightly. <laughs>